My name is Wesley Moore. Um, I'm from San Diego, California, and I'm currently a student at Pacific Union College. Something inside me just tells me to climb, and if I'm not climbing, I'm not happy. I'm just like, I'm bored. Probably right now I'd have to say sport climbing is my, my interest. I used to road bike a lot, and I liking that challenge and that pain factor, it kind of, it's kind of addicting in a way. And when I got up to here, I couldn't road bike as much, mostly out of choice and just kind of falling out with it because I was in it for so long. I kind of lost my, my stoke for it. And then I found climbing, found a bunch of guys that climbed and we just, just climbed and I liked it. And I was like, I'm gonna keep pushing the limits and here I am. <laughs> Roy Benton, man, that guy. Roy's just hardcore, he's like the ma mountaineering Yoda, you know what I mean? I climbed Mount Elbert when I was uh, 10. <laughs> In the early 90s, kind of made it a project to finish what's sometimes called the Grand Slam in Colorado, doing all the 14,000 foot peaks, and carry all my gear in between on a mountain bike and never get in a car. And I was able to finish in uh, 38, 37 and a half days, 38 and a half days to get back to the starting place. I kind of made a loop of it. I always have seen like climbing like Everest and that kind of stuff. And I was always curious, how do you do that? Where do you start? I met Roy and we were rock climbing and he kind of started telling me stories and getting me interested in it. By meeting Roy, it kind of opened up a, a gateway to have the opportunity to start mountaineering. I just said, dude, let's just go climb Mount Whitney. And it was like, it sounded like a great idea. So we just went for it. I, what I love about Wesley is he's super enthusiastic. Really the whole thing about going to Mount Whitney is his idea. Saw mountains when my dad would take me out camping and stuff, and I'd just kind of be in awe, awe of them, and I'd just be like, man, I want to be on top of those one day. Met Chris actually in Colorado over Christmas. I, I knew that he was Mike's brother, and I climbed with Mike last October. And he and Grant uh, Ortelheit and I had planned to do kind of a tough mountaineering venture, and that did get us thinking more about uh, the Whitney Project. <laughs> okay, this is really gonna happen. So Mount Shasta, so the reason we climbed that was because Roy was pretty set on us getting a um, warm up, getting our feet wet in mountaineering before we got super committed on Whitney because Whitney is more technical and difficult climb, higher altitude, stuff like that. Shasta, it was definitely hard, definitely. It was what I was expecting though. I was expecting it to be painful, but, and I expected that I could probably push through that pain but what I couldn't push through was a nausea. Wesley coming along on Shasta and having his issues, it was kind of a wake up call for all of us about what can happen. It can happen to anybody, actually. So I think it kind of sobered us up. It was like cold, it, like you start at four in the morning and then a little bit before sunrise, I just started to feel like horrible. Wesley had been kind of short on sleep. I pulled all night the night before, I didn't sleep that night. And we all decided to turn around at that point. I didn't suck it up enough. I should have sucked it up. I should have just gone for it. But it was still fun. Like, I got my taste of mountaineering. I'm like, hey, you know, Whitney's gonna be a lot harder than this. I need to push it harder. It's like three in the morning. Um, it's like, it's about 32 degrees. I got out of the car in shorts and a t-shirt, really SoCal guy style, you know. I'm freezing, and we're about to start probably the hardest climb of my life. And I'm cold. And it's fun. And then a little bit before sunrise, I just started to feel like horrible. And so I was just like, I'm gonna suck it up, I'm just gonna keep going. Considering I haven't slept more than like eight hours in the past four days. All right. <laughs> I got nauseated, my muscles just started cramping, I felt horrible, and I didn't want to give up, but at the same time, I, you know, I don't think I would have made it to the top. You've been shredding some gnar? Too much gnar. <laughs> Wesley was looking kind of green around the gills and was really struggling physically, so. Bad. All my legs are cramping, so.
I wouldn't say I had something to prove, but to him, I really wanted to like prove myself. So he thought of me like a strong climber. And so it kind of sucked because on Chasta I failed. And I think I think he started to view me as like a weak, a weak per I wouldn't say weak, because being up on a mountain isn't very weak, but like as the weak link. After Shasta, I felt really bad about Shasta because, um, like, Roy being kind of like an old school mountaineer, he's been doing it forever, he knows all about it. Cheddar Brent, you might think it's below beneath you, this instant form of it. So, mentally, like, when I got back, I was like, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna prove him wrong, you know what I mean? So, I just want, I want to, like, almost reinstate myself into the mountaineering community. We were not planning to take the trail route, we were planning to take the, the more challenging uh, and steeper uh, Mountaineer's Gully, where I thought, I, I wasn't sure that Wesley was tested, was in terms of his endurance, and, and uh, both mental and physical. So there were stories that, that out in rock climbing and at a couple of times when, when things had gotten uh, pretty stiff that Wesley had uh, and uh, had kind of gone over the edge mentally a little bit. Reaching our campsite and being the first day and being like, wow, I'm just dead. Like, oh man, like, when we were searching for campsites, I was like, I don't care, I'll stop on this rock and just sleep. I'm so gone. Like, I've been tired before, physically and mentally, but I've always been able to go home and just crash out of my bed. But here, I had to crash out on a pad. Wesley and Grant were feeling a little under under the weather, I think, when we first got up to camp on the first night. Seeing Grant get a little ev el like altitude sick, knowing that he's done this before, he's been at like 19,000 feet in Patagonia, I was like, wow, dude, he's getting sick? Man, what's in store for me? I'm gonna be gone, man. I'm gonna be barfing my brains out. Going to sleep, I was like, man, I hope tomorrow's better. We left pretty early the next morning. Not an alpine start, but early enough. Definitely probably one of the most tired I've been. He wasn't at all sure he was gonna make it. You know, I was like, you know what? You just need to hit it hard. You need to just build up that mental fortitude and just be mentally strong and just focus and stay focused the whole time. Don't think, man, I wish I was comfortable in my bed. If you don't wanna do it, you're not, one, you shouldn't be there and you're not gonna be successful at it. Just hammered it up some like kind of sketchy ledges, something that I didn't really like doing in mountaineering boots. Uh, a couple of people got into tricky situations. We got to the top over right over the pass at the top of the mountaineer's goalie. And we took a hard left and went up this the next another chute. And you know, at first looking at it, we're like, oh, it's not that bad, we'll be fine. And then we get on it, and Chris is pretty much leading. He I'm following him, and we get on this little snow field with a direct drop off at the bottom, and the snow was completely unstable. We had this group of climbers in front of us, another group, and they were launching rocks at us the whole time. I see a rock, and I'm like, oh crap, where? And you know, we're, you're always like, you're kind of looking down when they say rock, and then for some reason, whenever they yell rock, you just look up. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like the stupidest idea ever. So right when I look up, it's like, wham, rocked right to the neck. I'm like, <laughs> and I like fall on the ground, I'm like, oh man, no. That was scary, that was really scary. We like, we're at this like the sketchy ledge and it was no snow, just rock. I got a little dicey, I was kind of wishing we had roped up at that point, but it was a little late. And you know, if we had like rock climbing shoes, it would have been a piece of cake, like no problem at all. But we had mountaineering boots. Uh, we, me and Chris probably took the wrong way up and I kind of got stuck on a ledge because we didn't know if the rocks were stable. I really had nowhere to go. Grant and Roy were yelling at me, telling me to like, don't step on that, don't step on this, it's gonna fall. But it came to a point where I was like, you know what? 
I have nowhere else to go, so I just went for it. I just stepped on an unstable rock. It was, luckily it was solid. So I just stepped on, just went for it, and we just got right over the top. Whole party is making it. Yes, sir. After Shasta, somebody went near was probably the greatest thing ever. I was like, I've conquered altitude sickness, I've conquered my, like, my failure, and finally I'm like, wow, I went, I kind of went to new heights, climbing-wise. Yeah. I'm just happy to be up here. Do your victory dance. My victory dance. <laughs> well, I know not Wendy, a lot of people have been to the top of it, but it's like kind of like an accomplishment for me. You know, it's pretty tight. It was, not, it was pretty sick. <laughs>